In previous sections, we have learnt that water spreads on hydrophilic surfaces and beads on hydrophobic surfaces. We defined ideal surfaces as well as the contact angle of water and said that contact angles were a measure of spreading or beading of water on a surface. Here is a mind map of the topics we will cover in this section. Let's begin by looking at Young's equation. To calculate the contact angle of water on an ideal surface, we use Young's equation. The equation uses the interfacial free energy values of the solid liquid, solid gas and liquid gas interfaces to calculate contact angle. Interfacial free energy also known as surface or interfacial tension, is a measure of the energy required to create a unit area of the interface measured in joules per metre squared. The interfacial tension can equivalently be considered as a force acting on a line of unit length of the interface measured in newtons per metre. For a droplet of water, the molecules at the surface have fewer nearest neighbours than those in the bulk. As a result, the intermolecular attractions between the molecules at the surface is greater, creating a surface film of stronger interactions. This is called the surface tension, as the surface is bound more strongly and is harder to penetrate than the bulk of the droplet. This is why objects denser than water can sometimes float on the surface. A useful analogy is that the force or surface tension that holds a water droplet together is like the elastic skin of a balloon. When the surface tension is penetrated, the droplet will disperse and the water will spread. Young's equation arises from considering the condition of thermodynamic equilibrium, where the three interfacial tensions, treated as forces, are balanced in the horizontal direction along the line of the solid interface. Rearranging the equation, we can obtain the cosine of the contact angle in terms of the interfacial tensions. The value of the contact angle can be between 0 and 180 degrees and varies widely depending upon the chemical compositions of the solid, liquid and gas that form the interfaces. The interfacial tension of the solid surface is key to determining whether a surface is hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Historically, a contact angle of 90 degrees has been the cut-off point between hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces. When the contact angle is less than 90, cosine theta is positive. From this, we can assert that the solid gas surface free energy is high for hydrophilic surfaces. When the contact angle is greater than 90, cosine theta is negative. Similarly, we can say that hydrophobic surfaces have a low solid gas surface free energy. In reality, no surface can be perfectly ideal, and it is the imperfections of the surfaces such as topography and roughness, as well as the chemical composition, which determine how water droplets will behave. For non-ideal surfaces, Young's equation must be modified. We now need to consider the contact angle hysteresis, which is taken to be zero in the ideal case. Contact angle hysteresis is the difference between advancing and receding contact angles. The advancing contact angle is the maximum stable contact angle, whilst the receding contact angle is the minimum stable contact angle of a water droplet. By tilting a droplet, we can easily visualise the difference between the advancing and receding contact angles. One method of measuring contact angle hysteresis is by using the Cecil drop machine. The machine films a water droplet on a surface, side on, using a high speed camera. The volume of the drop is then varied using a needle. The advancing contact angle is measured after increasing the volume of the drop whilst the receding contact angle is measured after decreasing the volume of the drop. These angles and the difference between them vary widely depending on the surface. When looking at how a water droplet lies on a non-ideal surface, there are two different regimes to consider. 
In the Wenzel regime, all of the liquid droplet is in contact with the surface. The apparent observed contact angle is different to that measured by Young's equation because of the roughness of the surface. The apparent contact angle for a Wenzel state is related to Young's contact angle by the given relation. In the equation, R is the surface roughness, which is a ratio of the true surface area over the ideal flat surface area of the solid. R is always greater than 1 because of the surface roughness. As a result, the magnitude of the cosine of the apparent Wenzel angle is always greater than the cosine of Young's angle. Because of the relation between the magnitudes of the two cosines, it can be shown that when Young's angle is less than 90 degrees, the Wenzel angle is less than Young's angle. This shows that hydrophilicity is increased in the Wenzel state relative to the ideal case. When Young's angle is greater than 90 degrees, the Wenzel angle is greater than Young's angle. This shows that hydrophobicity is also increased in the Wenzel regime compared to the ideal. We have shown that by increasing the roughness of the surface going from the ideal to the non-ideal Wenzel case, hydrophilic surfaces become more hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces become more hydrophobic. Droplets in a Wenzel state demonstrate high contact angle hysteresis. This is because the droplet is in contact with the surface at all points, which leads to high adhesion as there are lots of interactions between the droplet and the surface. Wenzel surfaces also have a high roll-off angle. The roll-off angle is the angle a flat surface needs to be tilted before a water droplet sitting on the surface will roll off spontaneously. Wenzel surfaces often display microscale roughness, but not enough roughness for pockets of air to become trapped between the surface and the droplet. This is the case for droplets in the Cassie-Baxter regime. In the Cassie-Baxter regime, not all of the liquid droplet is in contact with the rough surface. Cassie-Baxter surfaces usually have increased roughness compared to Wenzel surfaces. There are pockets of air between the lower parts of the solid surface and the droplet. The droplet is effectively sat upon a composite surface made up of the highest parts of the solid surface and air pockets. Here we see the surface of a lotus leaf, which is comprised of tall pillars. We can easily see how a droplet could sit on these raised parts, analogous to lying on a bed of nails. The apparent contact angle is modified further from Young's equation in the Cassie-Baxter regime. Here, F denotes the fraction of the solid surface which is in contact with the liquid, i.e. the fraction of the solid that is wet, and RF is the roughness ratio of the wet area. In most cases, the Cassie-Baxter equation predicts a higher apparent contact angle relative to the Young angle. This is different to the Wenzel equation, where the apparent angle is higher only when Young's angle is greater than 90 degrees. Droplets in the Cassie-Baxter regime show low contact angle hysteresis. As the droplet is only in contact with the surface for a fraction of the area, the adhesion between the solid and liquid is reduced greatly. As a result, Cassie-Baxter droplets tend to have low roll-off angles. In the extreme cases of wetting, we can introduce two new types of surface, the superhydrophilic and superhydrophobic surface. Rough surfaces, where contact angle is very low, less than around 5 to 10 degrees, which often cannot be measured because the amount of spreading is too great, are said to be superhydrophilic. In these cases, complete wetting is said to have occurred. At the other end of the spectrum, rough surfaces with very high contact angles, above 130 to 150 degrees, very low contact angle hysteresis and low roll-off angles are said to be superhydrophobic. Superhydrophobic surfaces are often in the Cassie-Baxter regime. The most vital condition for our definition of superhydrophobicity is a contact angle hysteresis of less than 10 degrees. The low hysteresis leads to a low roll-off angle. Hysteresis is low because of the low adhesion between the surface and water due to lack of interaction from the rough composite surface. 
An example of a surface which is naturally hydrophilic is glass. This is because glass has a high interfacial tension of around 1000 millinewtons per meter. The interfacial tension of the water-air interface is much lower at 73 millinewtons per meter at room temperature. As a result, the contact angle is very low for high energy surfaces such as glass. The composition of glass, which is made of polar ionic salts such as silicon dioxide, makes interaction with water favourable and so water spreads. At the surface, the presence of silanol groups means that glass can form hydrogen bonds with water. As a result, water can chemisorb to the surface. Many polymers are naturally hydrophobic. The surfaces of hydrophobic polymers have low interfacial energy values relative to water. Consequently, the contact angle for these surfaces is high. A polymer with a very low interfacial energy of 18 millinewtons per meter is polytetrafluoroethylene, commonly known as PTFE. The structure of the polymer, a carbon backbone surrounded by fluorines, gives rise to strong hydrophobic properties. The fluorine atoms in PTFE are highly electronegative and create extremely strong bonds to carbon, which render the polymer virtually chemically inert. Consequently, the interaction of PTFE with water molecules is unfavourable, so PTFE is hydrophobic. Over the course of this section we have seen how Young's equation is formed and how it is used to calculate contact angles for ideal surfaces. We have expanded on Young's equation to look at the non-ideal surface cases, studying the Wenzel and Cassie-Baxter regimes. We have also defined contact angle hysteresis and seen how it is measured and termed two new types of surface, superhydrophobic and superhydrophilic. Finally, we have discussed examples of different materials which are hydrophobic and hydrophilic and explained the origin of their behaviours in terms of surface-free energy and interactions with water.